there are many of our people who are thinking more deeply and more broadly, are looking at it as it actually is, and are beginning to see it more in the international context and the relation that it has with the African uh, struggle, a uh, human rights struggle, or the struggle for human rights. And as such, we can then take it into the United Nations. And bring about the freedom of these people by any means necessary. Hello, everyone. This is We Charge Colonialism. We Charge Colonialism, we are an organization that is seeking to raise awareness of the fact that Africans in the United States are being colonized the same as Africans throughout the world. Right now, we are standing in solidarity with the nation of Cuba. If you do not know what's going on with Cuba, this small island, this harmless island that has stood the test of time as far as revolutionary the revolutionary fight is facing an onslaught of imperialist tactics seeking to derail the impact that they have in the world once again the united states has put cuba on the terrorist list the most uh, on the i'm sorry the state sponsor of terrorism list despite the fact that this country has not sponsored any terrorism despite the fact that un unlike the united states this country has stood for the people who are the small people stood for the people who are the everyday working class people stood for the people who are not heard in the general scheme of capitalism but because of this, because of this moral stance, this unwavering stance that has said that we're going to do what's right, even in a, even in the in the sight of doing things that are wrong, that could easily support our position, easily give us business businesses, easily give us enterprise. The Cuban government has always stood for the people. The Cuban government has always stood against colonialism. The Cuban government has always stood against neo-colonialism. But the stand against these elements is what makes them a a uh, a enemy to the capitalist interest of the United States. I encourage you to understand why it is that the United States would put a country that has never sponsored terrorism on the state sponsor of terrorism list. I encourage you to look at the history of Cuba prior to the revolution that has led to the liberation of so many people, not just in Cuba, but so many people throughout the world, inside of Africa, inside of Latin America, who have been similarly inspired and supported by this government in their fight against imperialism. Look at what happened whenever Fidel Castro came to power. At the time, Cuba was being ran by a dictator. Batista, who basically had been the, 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 the loving child of the United States. He allowed all of the capitalists to go into Cuba. He allowed all of the industry to dominate in that country. He allowed them to have access to the monies, the resources, and to have uh, essentially the imposing power to determine Cuban politics. He allowed the United States to do all of that. However, when Fidel Castro took power, seized power from Batista with the support of the people, the first thing that he said has to go is these US imperialist companies. You gotta get out of here. You cannot uh, continue to have this exploitative relationship inside of this country. Now, this is what made them an enemy. Not that they're sponsoring terrorism, because we know many of the United States allies who do sponsor terrorism. Not that they're doing anything that is actually a threat to the United States. I mean, they have never threatened the United States. They've never tried to plan anything to derail the United States government. None of those things. Just the fact that they said your your companies, your industries are not allowed to have a capital, to not allow to capitalize on the resources of our people and not allow us to be, have a benefit from the things that are being done for the benefit of your government. That is what made them an enemy. So I'm saying this to say, and we are saying this to say that we stand in solidarity with this country that has stood up against imperialism and stood for African liberation countless, countless times, whether it was Angola, whether it was Assad Shakur, you can look at the history of the Cuban government and their support against the uh, American apartheid and also uh, apartheid in South Africa and also colonialism and every single manifestation of it that has existed. Look at their stand against that and understand that we are standing with this country because this country is in desperate need of allies who agree with liberation and agree with freedom of people who are everyday people. So that's what we have to say and we are hoping that you will join us and voice support for the Cuban government despite the fact that they are facing again imperialist tactics in order to derail a liberation front that has existed for decades and decades and decades and we pray and believe by the grace of God will continue to exist into the future. So that's all I have to say. I hope you guys enjoy this video and we will see you in the next video. The Trump administration announced Monday that it was returning Cuba to the U.S. list of state sponsors of terrorism.
a move that could complicate any efforts by the incoming Biden administration to revive Obama-era easing of strained relations with Havana. Just nine days before President Donald Trump leaves office, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said Cuba was being blacklisted for, quote, repeatedly providing support for acts of international terrorism by harboring U.S. fugitives and Colombian rebel leaders. Cuba's security support for Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro was also cited by Pompeo as another reason for the blacklist. Pompeo said in a statement, quote, With this action, we will once again hold Cuba's government accountable and send a clear message. The Castro regime must end its support for international terrorism and subversion of U.S. justice. In 2015, former U.S. President Barack Obama formally removed Cuba from the terrorism list to help restore diplomatic ties between the two countries. Returning Cuba to the list rolls back that effort and would require lengthy legal deliberations for President-elect Joe Biden to reverse the move. The terrorism designation carries a prohibition on U.S. economic aid and a ban on U.S. arms exports, among other restrictions.